Okay, this is going to be the first video for the solutions for my worksheet review problems for calculus. Worksheet, if you want to see the web sheet or the web sheet, the worksheet, the links in my comment section. And again, I'm going to go through the, all these examples a little bit quicker than normal, just again, because I'm expecting this to be a review. So let's do problems one through six here. We've got a couple of linear equations in problems one and two. Three, four, five are quadratic equations. And then we've got a slightly higher degree uh, polynomial. So nothing too crazy. Hopefully none of it's too crazy, right? But again, it's easy to forget these things. So 2x plus 9 equals 4. Nothing too bad here. The idea, again, we just want to isolate the x. So the first thing I would do is just subtract 9 from both sides. That'll leave us with 2x on the left. Well, 4 minus 9 is going to leave us with negative 5. And now to get the x by itself, well, since we're multiplying by 2, we can divide both sides by 2. And we'll get our solution of x equals negative 5 over 2. And again, um, a lot of people are used to working with decimals. Get used to working with fractions. If you still have a fear of fractions, um, I would say get, get as comfortable with them as you can because you're just going to have to learn to manipulate things algebraically using fractions in a calculus class. So try not to turn things into decimals if at all possible would be my advice. Okay, so number two, we've got two-thirds x plus four-fifths x equals 12. So a couple different ways you could do this. You could get common denominators on the left side because we want to combine our like terms, um, right? Both of these terms involve an x. Another thing we can do is multiply by the least common multiple. Uh, so the least common multiple of our denominators, we've got a denominator of three, a denominator of five, and well, the 12 has a denominator of one. The least common multiple of 3 and 5, well, the smallest number that both 3 and 5 will divide into evenly will be the number 15. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 15. Okay, so let's see. When we multiply, we've got to distribute. So 15, if we divide by 3, that'll leave us with 5. So multiplied by 2x would give us 10x. Equivalently, 15, so right, you just multiply across the top and across the bottom. Likewise, you would have 30 over 3, again, would give you 10x. And I like to do the division first, because to me it makes the arithmetic easier. So 15 divided by 5 will be 3. Multiplied by 4x will be 12x. Likewise, again, if you do 15 multiplied by 4, that'll be 60 divided by 5. Another way to get our 12x. And let's see, 15 times 12, well, 15 times 10 would be 150, 2 times 50 would be 30, 150 and 30 would give us 180. So now we've got nice whole numbers. Well, 10 plus 12 will give us 22x. Still have our 180 on the right side, and we could simply just divide both sides by 22. Well, let's see, these are both even, so I know that I can certainly just uh, reduce it a little bit. So 180 divided by 2 will be 90. 22 divided by 2 will be 11. 11 is a prime number. doesn't go into 90, so I know that that will be nice and reduced. So my solution will be x equals 90 over 11. All right, let's keep chugging along here. All right, number three is simple quadratic. Again, to solve quadratics, you can either try to factor. The things I would do, the only thing I ever do is either factor or use the quadratic formula. That's pretty much all I do to solve quadratic equations. You can also, of course, complete the square. Or you could even try to graph it if you're allowed to use a graphing calculator and find solutions. But to me, that's... That's uh, not a very good way to do it in general. Um, you want to be able to either factor it, use the quadratic formula, or complete the square, I say. And again, completing the square is probably a bit overkill to solve quadratic equations, but you will have to complete the square in other places in calculus. It ends up being a useful algebraic technique, just so you know. So it will come back at some point. So you might as well practice it on a quadratic equation from now and again. But this, to me, is one that factors nicely. 
So if the coefficient on x squared is just a positive 1, which in this case it is, we just look for two numbers that multiply to give us the, the constant, which is 8, but add up to the, the term involving x, which is 6. So, okay, two numbers that multiply to 8 but add up to 6. Um, how about positive 2 and positive 4? And now we just set each factor equal to 0 and solve. Well, if we have x plus 2 equals 0, we can just subtract 2 from both sides and get x equals negative 2. x plus 4 equals 0, we can subtract 4 from both sides and simply get x equals negative 4. And those are our solutions. Let's see, number 4. 3x squared plus 5x plus 14 equals 0. All right, so this one's already a little more difficult than the other one because now this trick of looking for two numbers that add or multiply to 14 but add up to 5 that doesn't work anymore because of this coefficient of 3 so there's a couple of different ways to do it typically for me I still just try to factor it by trial and error um, I made up these problems a while ago I don't remember if this one even works or not and um, I don't think it's going to so right I need two numbers that multiply to, four, to positive 14 and add up to positive 5. So I would need a positive and a positive. Well, there's no way 1 and 14 is going to work. There's no way that I can use 2 and 7 so that when I distribute, I get 5. So to me, that tells me already that factoring is not going to work nicely. So I'm just going to use the quadratic. So remember, the quadratic says we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and okay so our a value is the the coefficient on the x squared term the b value is the coefficient on the term involving x and then the c value is the constant okay so here a is going to equal 3, b is going to equal positive 5, c is going to equal 14. Notice I'm taking the the signs into account so, okay, we've got x equals, well, we would have negative of positive 5, which will give us negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared, that's 5 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 14, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. Well, in calculus, you almost always, at least in most of the courses I've seen, the ones I've taught, we always deal with real numbers and already looking underneath the radical I'm gonna have 25 minus well what is this I've got 12 times 14 so I'm lazy too lazy to calculate that notice 25 minus whatever 12 times 14 is I'm sure you can do that 10 times 14 will give you 140 2 times 14 will give you 28 so that's gonna be 168 25 minus 168 this is gonna give us a negative number That's going to give us a negative number, which already tells me that this has no real solutions. So I'm just going to call it a day and stop right there. So there's no value that we can substitute in for x, no real number value we can substitute in for x and get 0 as a solution. Of course, you could use complex numbers, imaginary numbers, but again, typically you don't see those in calculus, at least, again, the courses I've ever taught. So. I'm going to stop right there. Okay, so that was number four. Two more to go. Let's see, number five looks pretty similar. Okay, so 3x squared plus 5x equals 14. Do not do the common mistake that people oftentimes do. People will just go ahead and factor the left side. They'll say, oh, we can pull an x out, and then we've got 3x plus 5 equals 14 and then they'll say okay well x equals 14 and 3x plus 5 equals 14 if you're thinking that that's the way to do it that's a big big no-no and um, be careful um, it might be a, already a little alert that says your algebra is shaky so anytime you have a quadratic equation almost any type of equation really except for a linear equation you want to make one side equal to zero and try to factor it so that's what I'm gonna do
So we can subtract 14 from both sides. Okay, so now I'm going to use my same quadratic formula that we did a second ago. Uh, maybe this factors nicely, in fact. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think here. 1 and 7, I don't see how that's going to work. Or, excuse me, 1 and 14, I don't see how that's going to work. 2 and 7, um, again, maybe it does. I'm going to be lazy and just jump to the chase. That's my A value. That's my B value. That's my C value. I don't think it would. I'm just going to use the quadratic formula again. So we have x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And now the nice thing is, well, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's not nice, maybe it's not good or bad, maybe it's neutral. In this case, we are going to get a real solution. two real solutions. So we've got a negative times a negative, that's going to be a positive. 4 times 3, we said that's 12 times 140, we just said that was 168. All over 2 times 3, which is 6. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, so 25 plus 168, I guess that's going to give us 193 all over 6. 193, oh, is that prime? Um, 10, 13, uh, let's see, it could be, I don't know, I'm too lazy to figure it out, so you can always try to break this down and reduce it a little bit, you can make a little factor tree, um, 3 doesn't go into it, obviously no even number is going to go into it, 5 doesn't, to 7, let's see, that would be 140, we would need another 53, 7 doesn't, um, certainly 9 doesn't, um, so maybe this factors, maybe 193 factors, and even if it does, you know, there's no guarantee that it's going to factor and simplify. So I'll leave that for you to check it on your own. That'll be fun stuff. So I know that we have at least two, we have the two solutions, 5 plus the square root of 193 over 6. Excuse me, I think I said just 5. So x equals negative 5 plus the square root of 193 over 6. That's one solution. And the other solution will be negative 5 minus the square root of 193 over 6. So we've got two real valued solutions in this case. And last but not least, let's see if we can squeeze it on here so we don't waste another piece of paper. Number 6, we've got x to the 4th minus 4x to the 3rd minus 21x squared equals 0. Well, anytime you're trying to solve an equation, the first thing to do is factor out the greatest common factor. Well, I see an x to the fourth, an x to the third, and an x squared. I can certainly factor out x squared. So x squared times x squared will give me x to the fourth. If I multiply x squared by negative 4x, I'll get my negative 4x to the third. And then minus 21 equals 0. And now at this point, what I want to try to do is just try to factor this further. If I couldn't factor it, I would just simply go back and use the quadratic formula on it to see if it has any real solutions. So, okay, so there's my x squared from before. x and x, well, I need two numbers that multiply. I know they have to multiply to a negative but add up to a negative, so I know I'm going to need a positive and a negative in there somewhere. I think uh, 7 and 3 are going to be the candidates. How about negative 7 and positive 3? Those will multiply to negative 21, but add up to negative 4. So now we just set each factor equal to 0. x squared equals 0. Well, if we take the square root of both sides, we'll get x equals 0 as a solution. If we take x plus 3 and set that equal to 0, well, we can just subtract 3 from both sides and get x equals negative 3. And last but not least, if we take x minus 7, set that equal to 0, we'll just get x equals positive 7 as our solution there. So, all right, the first six problems there, um, I'm going to knock out some more, and we'll keep going through these different types of equations, absolute value, uh, logarithms, rational, a bunch of different types. Uh, just again to refresh you, refresh you a little bit on those. So again, I hope these make sense. Nothing too crazy. You'll see linear and obviously quadratic equations all the time though. So definitely want to be familiar with them. Make sure you've got the quadratic formula memorized if you don't. 
got a nice video on how to derive it actually by using the completing the square if you've never seen how to derive it or would like to see it. So, all right, that's the end of this one.